You point your phone at a pixelated mess of black and white squares dozens of times a week, probably to see a menu with overpriced avocado toast, and you have absolutely no idea how it works. Today, I'll explain QR codes to you like you're five years old. And by the end of this, you'll finally understand how that chaotic splotch of ink magically tells your phone exactly what to do. Let's get the biggest secret out of the way first. That QR code isn't just a random picture. It's a language. It's a super nerdy, very organized language made entirely of little squares. Your phone's camera is not just taking a picture, it's acting as a translator. It looks at the square language and says, Oh, I know what this says, and then shows you the message in a language you can understand, like a website link or some text. And that's it. It's not magic, it's just a very clever way of writing information down so that a machine can read it super, super fast. Think of it like a book. When you open a book, you know where to start reading because the words are on the page. There are corners on the page and the lines are straight. You don't just start reading from the binding or the back cover. A QR code has to give your phone the same kind of clues. Your phone is smart, but it's not that smart. It needs some help. It needs to know where the message starts, which way is up, and how big the letters are. So, let's look at the parts of that square book. The first thing you probably noticed are those three big chunky squares. One in the top left, one in the top right, and one in the bottom left corner. These are the most important parts of the whole thing. They're the corner pieces of the puzzle, and their official name is finder patterns. But we can just call them anchor squares. They have one job and one job only. To scream at your phone's camera. Hey, over here! The important stuff is inside the box! These three anchor squares tell your phone everything it needs to know to even begin reading. Because there are three of them and not four, your phone immediately knows which way is up. If you hold your phone upside down, the phone sees the pattern of the three squares and knows to digitally flip the image around before it starts to read. It doesn't matter if you hold your phone sideways, upside down, or at some weird angle. The phone will find those three squares, use them as a reference, and orient the entire picture correctly. It's like a built-in compass for the code. It establishes the boundaries. The phone says, okay, the message lives within the area defined by the three big boys. I will ignore everything else. And this is why a QR code can be on a busy poster with lots of other pictures and words, and your phone knows to only pay attention to the code itself. Those three squares are like bouncers at a club, telling the camera what's part of the VIP section and what's not. Now, you might be thinking, what about the other corner, the bottom right? Why is it so lonely? Why doesn't it get a big square? Well, that's a great question for a five-year-old to ask. The corner is empty on purpose to help the phone confirm the orientation. If all four corners had a big square, then the code would be symmetrical and your phone might get confused about which way is up. But with one corner missing its big square, the arrangement is unique. There's only one possible way to turn it so that the squares are in the top left, top right, and bottom left positions. It's a foolproof system for telling your phone how to hold the map. But wait, there's more. If you look really closely at a bigger QR code, you might see one or more smaller squares floating somewhere in the middle of the mass. This little guy is called an alignment pattern. Let's just call it the straightening square. Its job is to help the phone read the code if the image is warped or bent. Imagine you're trying to read a message written on a crumpled piece of paper. The lines get all wavy and it's hard to read. Well, the same thing can happen when you're scanning a QR code on a wrinkled bag of chips or on a cup that's curved. The straightening square gives the phone an extra reference point. The phone knows exactly where that little square is supposed to be, and if it looks like it's in the wrong spot because the image is curved, then the phone software can cleverly unwrinkle the image digitally. It stretches and pulls the image in its brain until the little square is back where it belongs, which makes the rest of the grid of tiny squares perfectly readable. It's like a digital thumbtack in the middle of the page, holding everything flat so that the phone can read it properly. Without it, your phone would give up much more easily. So, we have the three big anchor squares to frame the message and a little straightening square to flatten it out. What's next? Well, look at the lines that connect the big anchor squares. You'll see a dotted line of alternating black and white squares running from the top left square to the top right square, and another one running from the top left square down to the bottom left square. These are called timing patterns, or a better name for them is grid lines. These grid lines are the lines on your notebook paper. They tell your phone how big each individual tiny square is. They set up the entire grid structure for the code. The phone scans along this dotted line and learns the size of the cells, and it says, Okay, each little piece of information is exactly this many pixels wide and this many pixels tall. This allows the phone to lay a perfect, invisible grid over the entire QR code. Now, it doesn't have to guess where each little square begins and ends. It knows the exact coordinates for every single dot in the message. 
it knows it can go to row 5, column 12, and find a specific piece of info. This is incredibly important. Without the timing pattern, the phone would be lost, unable to tell if a big black splotch is one big square or four little squares all smushed together. The grid lines make sure every single tiny square is counted for, one by one. Now, before we get to the actual message, there's one more simple part to notice. The blank space all around the QR code. That boring white border is called the quiet zone. It's actually very important. The quiet zone is exactly what it sounds like. It's a silent area that tells the phone's translator, Okay, the code is over. Everything outside of this border is just noise. Ignore it. It's like putting a frame around a painting. The frame tells you where the art is. The quiet zone tells the camera where the code is. And your phone needs a little bit of clear, empty space to be able to properly identify the finder patterns. If you have text or images right up against the edges of the QR code, your phone can get confused and might not be able to read it at all. It needs that quiet space to think. Okay, so the phone has used the anchor squares to find the code, the straightening square to flatten it, and the grid lines to figure out the size of all the little boxes. Now what? Now it's finally time to read the message. All those other hundreds of tiny black and white squares packed into the middle? That's data. And that's the actual website link, the contact information, or the Wi-Fi password. It's the juicy center of the QR code. The language it uses is the simplest language in the world. It's a language with only two words, on and off, or yes and no, or one and zero. In a QR code, a black square means one, and a white square means zero. And that's it. Your phone's camera goes through the grid one square at a time and calls out what it sees, 1001101. It does this hundreds of times in a fraction of a second. This long string of ones and zeros is a special code that computers understand perfectly. Each group of these numbers represents a letter, a number, or a symbol. So a specific pattern of ones and zeros might mean the letter H, another means T, another means Y, and another means P, and so on, until it's spelled out the entire website address that you're trying to visit. Your phone is a speed reader, translating that black and white square language into human language almost instantly. But Here's the coolest part of the entire thing. What happens if part of the QR code is damaged? What if someone spilled coffee on it, or you used a marker to draw a smiley face in the middle of it? Well, you've probably noticed that sometimes, even a dirty or damaged QR code still works perfectly. And that is not an accident. That's because the QR code is not just a message. It's a message with a built-in backup plan. This is called error correction, which is just a fancy way of saying it repeats itself. When the QR code is made, the information is stored in there, but so are extra backup copies of the same information. The data is chopped up and stored in a very clever, redundant way. It's like writing down your phone number for a friend, but also writing it down a second time right below, just in case the first one gets smudged. The QR code does this mathematically. A certain percentage of the data in the code is dedicated purely to this backup system. This means that up to 30% of the QR code can be completely missing or even unreadable, and your phone can still piece together the entire message from the parts that are left, using the backup data to fill in the blanks. It's like solving a puzzle with a bunch of missing pieces, but you've got a picture on the box of what the final puzzle's supposed to look like. Your phone uses the error correction data as its picture on the box to figure out what the missing pieces are. This is why you can put a logo or a small picture in the middle of a QR code, and it still works just fine. The error correction is so good, it just works around the hole. So, let's recap the whole journey. Your phone's camera opens, you point it at the squiggly square, and in a blink, the phone's brain finds the three big anchor squares in the corners to know where the message is and which way is up. It uses the quiet zone to make sure that it's not reading anything else on the page, and it uses the little straightening square to digitally flatten the image if it's on a weird surface. It uses the dotted grid lines to learn the size of each tiny square and create a perfect map. Then, it reads every single black and white square as a 1 or a 0, translating that long, boring computer code into the website for the restaurant. And if part of the code is messed up, it uses the built-in backup information to fix the message and show it to you anyways. And all of this happens in less time than it takes you to decide that you don't actually want the avocado toast. So, a QR code isn't some mysterious symbol, it's just a very organized little book written in a language of squares. The big squares are the corners of the page, the little squares in the middle keeps the page from wrinkling, and the dotted lines are the lines on the paper. The rest of it's just a story, written in a simple on and off code, with a few extra paragraphs thrown in just in case you spill your juice on it. See? You get it now. You're not just a person who points a phone at a thing. You're practically a digital linguist. You understand how the square language works. 
Now go forth and scan with your newfound wisdom.